This is the Parenting IQ podcast where our mission is to equip you during your child's academic years to bring learning to the daily little moments. I'm your host, Dr. Kelly Cagle, and I want to welcome you to season four, Little Moments, Big Impacts. Lifelong learners, this is the 100th episode of the Parenting IQ podcast. I cannot even believe I am saying those words. In fact, I've been kind of even emotional thinking about this day in the past few weeks, just thinking about the faithfulness of God, first of all, for getting us through, for seeing us through up until this point, and also in gratitude towards you guys, the listeners, the audience for listening along, for sharing about this podcast, for supporting our ministry, for seeing the benefit of these words in your life. Because as we've shared time and time again, our heart here at the Parenting IQ podcast, and really Dr. Kelly Cagle in general as a company, is for transformation of families. That's really all we want. We know that we can't do this work without you guys taking these words and applying it into your home. In fact, that would just be a waste of our time. If you weren't able to take these things and these strategies and these tools and turn around and apply them in your home, it'd be a waste of my time. I was just talking to someone recently. In fact, it's like a grandma. And she was telling me, Kelly, the the wonderful thing about every time that you pop into my feed is that it's things that I did when I was raising my kids it's it it's strategies they're strategies that have been seen and tested through time and it's not like this new age stuff and it's not like this up and coming it's things that have always worked and this is a previous classroom teacher for many 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 years a retired teacher who told me these words and so be encouraged today that what i'm sharing you not it's not just coming from me it's not just coming from the research that i conduct This is coming from years of experience and years of thinking about the best strategies, the best parenting strategies that I believe align with, number one, the Bible. The most important thing is the Bible, the Word of God. And secondly, that I believe that I've seen it in previous generations that I also know could benefit our current generation. So with those words... I have something that I want to present to you today. This is nothing new. If you've been following my work for the last couple of years, you've heard these words before. You've heard me talk about the multiple intelligence theory, but today I wanted to do something special with it being such a special episode. I want to talk to you how to apply this knowledge and this information to really just maximize your child's potential. And I'm wearing my Harvard uh, sweater here, Harvard University sweater. If you are watching on our YouTube channel, Dr. Kelly Cagle, you know, you you can see it. It's really cute. I love the sweater. I am sad, though, to say that I did not attend Harvard. Maybe someday. It's kind of like a, a bucket dream of mine. But that's beside the point. This theory that I talk about often, the eight multiple intelligence theory, was designed by a Harvard psychologist. His name is Howard Gardner. So I'm wearing this sweater in his honor, he came up with this theory that really unpacks how we can look at the uniqueness of each learner. With it being the IQ, when you're thinking of if you are extremely intelligent, you have high IQ, and if you don't, if you're just kind of dumb. And Howard decided to come against that men- mentality and that thought and say, you know what? Everybody is gifted, but just in different ways. And in his research, he found eight different ways that could align uh, these, these gifts, these talents, this uniqueness of individuals. So to go along with this special episode, not only am I going to teach you on these eight intelligences, but I also created something special for you. If you go to Dr. Kelly Cagle on Instagram right now, You can pause this episode, head over there to my Instagram account, send me a DM with the word quiz. I created a special resource for you for this episode alone. 
I'm celebrating with you. So I wanted to give you something as a word of gratitude for being here, for participating in this journey. And I created this resource for your benefit. So you can look at these eight intelligences and take a little quiz as you study your child. This isn't like a hundred questions. This is literally 20 questions to get you thinking about your own child as a learner and also about yourself. Because let's keep all of this real. We are all about authenticity. Life is about self-awareness, which then projects to in our parenting, right? So if we take care of ourselves and our well-being, if we explore ways that we can better understand our the own ways that we're taking, that we take our own ways, then we can project these things onto our kids. And so this quiz is as you study your child, as you think about your child, as you listen to this episode, it's a resource to go along with this information, whether it's about your child, you think about yourself, you think about a coworker, you think about your spouse, whatever that may be. This is a quiz to help you and you can print as many copies as you want or you can just have it on your phone and uh, as a resource. So Dr. Kelly K, go on IG, send me a DM with the word quiz, and I'll have that over to you. So let's dig in to today's episode as you think about your child's strengths, but then also you kind of try to pinpoint some of their weaknesses so you can strengthen those weaknesses. I want to remind you too to go to Apple or Spotify, wherever you're listening, and subscribe. Our YouTube channel, Dr. Kelly Cagle, would love to have you follow along there as well. But the eight multiple intelligence theory, as I mentioned, was developed by Howard Gardner. He's still alive, by the way. I have been in touch with some of his individuals before, some of his contacts, and it's fantastic that they continue to do this work. But he said that there are different unique ways of learning and not everyone learns the same. The reason why I really believe and love this framework to help moms and dads, to help teacher, te- to help teachers and pastors, coaches and bosses, whoever it is, any kind of leader, because it helps them recognize people's strengths, not just kids, but everyone's strengths. So you can maximize instruction, even if it's instruction for chores, instruction in the classroom, instruction in your sermon, however, in whatever facet that you deliver information that you teach people, whether you're training, whatever that may look like for you, you can maximize instruction accordingly. So the eight intelligences are as follows, spatial, bodily kinesthetic, musical, naturalistic, linguistic, logical, mathematical, interpersonal, and intrapersonal. Let's unpack those a little bit further. So the spatial ones, those are the kids that understand space really well. They are the ones who love visuals. They love charts. They love maps. They love images. They understand direction really well. They're they're the people that are like, trust me, I got this. I don't need directions. For example, my husband He doesn't even drive the DFW area that much to visit job sites. But boy, anytime I have to go anywhere, I feel like there are hundreds of freeways that all collide some way or another in the DFW area. If I don't put it in my GPS, you can forget it. I'm not getting anywhere. But Josh, on the other hand, dude, he is a walking map. He needs no map. He can get anywhere in this crazy large area metroplex that we live in. Not only that, my son, Titus, he's the one who's like, mom, here's uh, grandma's house. This is the way to grandma's house. And this was when he was like three years old. He also, Titus also can build with Legos tremendously well. He has creativity with pictures, with drawings, with developing. I mean, like he would be a phenomenal engineer, Titus would. And and that's because they understand space well. Josh understands space well, so does Titus. But me, on the other hand, not so much. Levi, as you know, is a soccer player, my oldest. He's almost 13. 
uh, he plays soccer. And one of the big things that he has to have for his game is spatial awareness on the field. And so that's something that we've always worked with him to develop because although it's not one of his main strengths, it actually is one of his weaknesses, but we know that about him. So as his mom and dad, we can help him strengthen those areas. And we work on that when we are around places, we work on that in the home, we give him Lego pieces and help ask them to create things. That is so these, uh, that this area, this gift of spatial awareness can grow in him. The second area is bodily kinesthetic. And these are the kids that understand their bodies and abilities. Although Levi doesn't understand space that well, he has to really work towards understanding space. His body is out of this world. His ability to understand his, his uh, like what he can do, what he's, he shouldn't do, the max, how, how high he can jump. He has been this way since he was two years old. He would put all these pillows on the ground and jump off the mantle. Josh and I'd be like, holy cow, if we don't put this kid in gymnastics, I'm afraid he's going to break a bone. And it was more so he could understand how to, he could learn his body to learn how to land is why we put him in gymnastics early on. But those kids that are so busy with their bodies, they're naturally athletic. They love hands-on activities. They move around a whole lot. They can also quite often get confused for kids that have ADHD. And this is an extreme disservice I'm not a medical doctor, so I don't like giving input about medical terminology, which I'm not even ethically allowed to do. However, I do know for a fact, I've seen it with my own eyes. I've coached plenty of parents. The conversations are so similar. It's my teacher, the te- my child's teacher believes that so-and-so can't focus in class and that they need medication. And at the same time, it's, okay, you're asking a bodily kinesthetic individual, a child who learns by moving their bodies to sit still behind a desk. And then not only that, because they can't do that, now you're telling them something is wrong with them. A huge, huge disservice that drives me bananas. Moving on to the third intelligence, it's musical. That one is pretty self-explanatory. The kids that are musically gifted or the people that are musically gifted. You know, the kids that are always humming, the kids that learn so very much by songs, the ABC songs, the one, two, three, the days of the week, all of these songs stick with kids. And this is not just because repetition is very beneficial for the person to learn information. It's really also because of the rhythm. Because if they turn anything into a song, they can learn that information better. So these are the kids that are humming, that are whistling all the time. Also the ones that turn anything into drumsticks. I was a classroom teacher before and I would have the kids that would be tapping. Again, you don't want to crush their creativity and also their natural talents. So it's more about equipping them with strategies. If you want to tap, if you want to keep a rhythm, Make sure that it's not distracting the uh, uh, the environment, but also use it to your advantage because it's something that's uniquely wired about you. That's a gift that you have in your learning. The fifth one is linguistic. You know, the wordy ones. They use really big words that you're just like, what in the world? How did you learn this word? They're the, the readers, the talkers, the storytellers, the ones that can... Uh, that take notes, that journal. These are your linguistic people. They're the ones that can express themselves really well with words and uh, can write well. The ones that blow their teachers away with their words. The sixth intelligence is logical, mathematical. And these are the matter of fact people. You know, the ones that wake up, I have one of those too. Levi, in fact, is logical, mathematical. And and let me add something real quick as I'm unpacking these. It doesn't mean that your kid has to have just one. It means that you can be reading this, the, the whole point of these intelligences 
as you grow up is that you develop yourself in all of these areas. So you are a holistic, a well-rounded person who can understand others, who can thrive mathematically, who can use your words well, who can express, understand space like the table or um, be able to communicate their needs, right? So the big picture, the ultimate goal is that as you grow up, as you become an adult, you are a well-rounded individual. And so when I say that Levi is also logical, mathematical, you might've thought, wait a minute, you just said he's bodily kinesthetic, but he actually has two extremely high intelligences. And that's also very common for people. So Levi's second one, ever since he was a little kid, he'd wake up and it would drive me crazy. He would wake up and say, mom, what's the plan today? And I am not logical. I am not that kind of person. I'm structured and I always have a plan, but it doesn't go from eight to 9 a.m. This is what we're going to do. And then at 12 o'clock, we're going to do this. And then at 2.30, we're going to do this. And for these logical mathematical kids, that is how they think. That is what helps them thrive as they grow up. This is what helps them keep structure with their time management for them to understand how to uh, maneuver their chores, their duties, their homework, their anything that's on their schedule. For the logical mathematical kid, it really helps if you tap into, even though it, it may not be your strength in your area, for you to say, you know what, this helps you. So let me organize our days so I can communicate to you somewhat of a structure. So they love specific instructions. They like to know the plan. They're very black or white. There's very little gray with these kids, which is why a lot of the open-ended questions come are harder for him take for them, take more work for them to compose something that is creative because they like the ABC answer. They like the matter of fact. The seventh intelligence is interpersonal. And these are the kids that understand others' needs. You know, most counselors are going to fall under this category. The people that can just say, hey, you know what? Pull up a seat. Come sit next to me. Let's talk. Tell me about your problems. The ones who are always ready to, and not only ready to empathize, but they also can empathize. There are the pastors, the ones that can, in a unique way, make you feel better just within minutes, just by being present, because this is a natural talent for them. And they can vibe people. They can um, work in group environments like a champ. So those are the inter interpersonal intelligent people. Then the final intelligence is intrapersonal. And these are the ones that understand their own needs. And the ones that have the emotional tank that say, you know what? I'm kept out, mom. I need a minute. And you're like, wait a minute. How do you even know that you need a minute? Or they say, this part right here, like there's this little spot in my head that hurts or this finger and this little joint hurts. And you're like, you're two years old. How can you tell me point exactly what hurts? The intrapersonal people not only understand their emotional tank, but also understand their bodies really well and can communicate that very clearly. So these are the eight intelligences. And the kicker that I want to pinpoint here is as you're listening to these eight areas, I want to ask you a question. Do you, even if you're not a teacher, never have been an educator, do you think that these eight intelligences are being targeted in a general classroom setting? And I'll tell you, the answer is no. In fact, I'll tell you right now that most classrooms, most lesson plans are designed for the linguistic child, which is through words. So a teacher standing in front of the classroom, teaching and having the, ch the children take notes, which then the kids can go home and understand those and study those notes for the test. So if your child is linguistic, great, kudos, they're going to thrive. If your kid is not linguistic, then the note-taking may not even be beneficial for them. 
the notes that they spent the 50 minutes during class taking may literally just be words filling a page. That's how my notes were. I am not a linguistic person. People, again, often think, Kelly, wait, you talk so much. You talk so clearly. So there's so much clarity in your communication. How is it that you're not a linguistic person? That's because I know that words expression is an area of weakness of mine. And I have worked really hard to strengthen that area because it is what I do for a living. But the notes it back when I was a student in class, you can forget it. I would hardly ever flip back to my notes. The second way that the general class, American classroom is set up is for the logical mathematical. So math, you think of math, you think of even geography, you think of history, you think of science. They are facts. They are, this happened on this day. You memorize this information, you ace a test. You understand this complex equation. This is, it's A plus B equals C. And for the child, again, who is not logical, mathematical, they may really struggle in school again. I am also not that person. I'm not logical, mathematical. And so the the the, the matter of fact situations, the memorization pieces were not a, a strength of mine. And I am not the ideal student to thrive in that kind of learning environment which is one of the big reasons. This is not to, to promote any kind of alternative schooling method, but that is why so much of my work is centered around parents exploring the best learning environment for their kids. And this is one of the things I talk a lot to parents about when I do coaching with them is let's think about your child. Oh, okay. So they're bodily kinesthetic. Do you think that they are in the best environment. If there's no other alternative environment that would work for them, okay. Like if you have to work full time and they can't be homeschooled, that's totally fine. If you are in a private school for several reasons and they're not going to make a- exceptions to abide by certain things that you want to ask for for your child, that's totally fine. But how can we move past that And still make sure that your child enjoys the learning process. Because if you don't equip them with strategies to navigate, to first of all, understand how they're wired. And then second, to thrive with those gifts, be empowered through those gifts with strategies to navigate those strengths. Then they're going to think that they're broken because they don't understand math. They're going to think that something that they're stupid because they can't write an essay when in reality is why don't you write this in a way that works for you with your gifts. And these eight ways are beautiful in their own unique ways. I believe in my mind, the way I see it is the world is beautiful, right? You can look outside. There's so much color. There's so much difference in nature and how creative God was. And in that creativity, he also recognized that you and I, humans in general, are so unique. So he gave you a different fingerprint than me. No one has the same DNA or fingerprint as you or me. And so how can we ensure that us, that our kids, that in our marriage, that within our family unit, that in whatever work environment that we do, that we can see the beauty and the uniqueness of people and are able to recognize their strengths. And they say, man, I see some areas of big talent in you. So I'm going to assign this task to you. Or, hey, why don't you try to do this in this way? Because I see this in you. Calling out life in other people so we can continue to be lifelong learners and enjoy the learning process. That is why I believe the eight intelligences have been life-changing in my home for myself, for my marriage, for my kids and the way that we conduct our lives. And so remember, I did create a resource for you just for this one special episode. If you go to my Instagram right now at Dr. Kelly Cagle, and you shoot me a DM with the word quiz, I can't wait to get that in your hands. 
because I want you to support your child so they can maximize their potential. I know that's what you have no doubt. That's what you want for your kid. I have no doubt that you want your kid to live up to the beautiful ways that they were created in their own strengths. So come be equipped, come grab that resource so you can speak life over your child. So you can learn your child and their strengths as you maximize their potential. Lifelong learners, I love you so much. Happy 100th episode. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting this ministry. I pray that it's blessing you as much as it's blessing us. And not only that, I pray, I really do. I pray for you all the time for transformation in your home as we continue to elevate your parenting IQ. Much love to you guys. See you later.